The Samsung Galaxy Tab A9 Plus is best described as a device that is great at doing one thing at a time, but it's not going to impress you if you have higher demands of it. I bought one in the hope that even a mid-range tablet like this one would be good enough to replace my aging Pixelbook Go from 2020. After some heavy usage since purchase, I was both pleasantly surprised but also wanting a little bit more, which I explain in this video. My Pixelbook Go was released four years ago at the time of this video, and is already starting to struggle with my daily use. With that in mind, I thought it was time to upgrade and try something new and bought the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. It's the new top mid-range tablet from Samsung. I had a vision that I could benefit from the tablet being more portable and easier to use for leisure activities, and thanks to the ability to connect to modern keyboards via Bluetooth, I'd still be able to use the tablet for my work tasks. While the Pixelbook Go was a lot more expensive at the time of launch, putting it into a different category than the Tab A9 Plus, I wanted to see if I could translate my requirements to a new contemporary piece of hardware without any noticeable drop in utility. After all, technology moves fast and what was leading edge a few short years ago would now be considered more mainstream and priced accordingly. As with every Samsung product we've owned as a family, the unboxing experience is always impressive. I really like the little touches, including the soft sleeve that even the less expensive devices are packed in. In terms of the box contents, you'll get the tablet and an official USB-C cable and that's it. The tablet itself is really nice to handle with an aluminium finish on the back and a nice glass screen. I decided to spend a bit extra on the official case too to protect it, plus it doubles up as a built-in stand. When it comes to the features, the fact the screen resolution is a little over 1080p wasn't as important to me. Given the screen size, high resolution really isn't a focus as I'd be consuming most of my content at arm's length. Even streaming shows and movies didn't impede my enjoyment. Understandably, for the price point, the A9 Plus doesn't support Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but given I've updated my home network to include both bands, it's a little disappointing the tablet can't utilise the speeds. The tablet still achieves between 130 and 190 megabits per second depending on the location in my house and I didn't notice any performance issues for video playback. Audio playback is just okay compared to the superior speakers included on the Pixelbook Go. You won't be using a tablet by itself to play music but it's fine for spoken words such as podcasts or YouTube videos. Thankfully it's very easy to connect any Bluetooth earphone, especially my Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro for a better listening experience. There's even a 3.5mm jack for wired headphones should you so desire. Talking of the Samsung ecosystem, beyond the earbuds functionality, it's possible to tether your Samsung phone with your tablet to not only text but even make phone calls. I'm a big fan of the feature as it means you can leave your phone charging but still stay connected with friends and family on your tablet. The tablet's use of Bluetooth has also additional benefits, one of which is being able to connect a keyboard to the tablet wirelessly. I recently bought an EpoMaker TH80 Pro for my main desktop computer, however thanks to the integrated Bluetooth radio the keyboard has proven a great partner for the A9 Plus. It has made the tablet a much more realistic option for productivity if I'm travelling or just want to set up to work somewhere other than my desk on my main computer. Like every other Samsung device you can add the tablet to smart things to enable tracking which is an added layer of security. When it comes to the battery one of the most important features to me is the ability to fast charge. Thankfully, the A9 Plus does support charging with a 15 watt charger and a 3 amp cable, but unlike my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, it doesn't support super fast charging, which is understandable for a device that costs a fraction of the price of the phone. Charging time is approximately 2.5 hours from empty. One interesting feature is that you can reverse charge other devices using a double ended USB C cable. The A9 Plus has a 7000 milliamp battery, which is pretty substantial. If you're out of your home and need to give your phone a bump in an emergency, then the feature will be really helpful. The charging rate is obviously a lot slower than a wall charger, which is understandable as a hardware limitation. The last notable feature that I like about the A9 Plus is a feature that is available for other Samsung tablets called Daily Board. While charging, the display can show you the time and weather and a slideshow of your pictures. Plus, you can have quick access to a memo board for jotting down quick...
And then you can also access smart things to track and monitor any other Samsung devices you've registered. Finally, you're able to use the tablet as an audio control screen, whether using the tablet speakers or while connected to a smart speaker. The feature isn't going to be for everyone, but we've recently retired our faulty Google Nest Hub Max and missed the always on screen with continual updates. Dailyboard goes some way towards replacing this functionality for my family. As a final note, the A9 Plus does include front-facing and rear-facing cameras, but ultimately they're just fine for snapping pictures in good lighting conditions or for video calls. The quality of the cameras are a long way from what the average user has come to expect from even lower budget phones available today. When it comes to performance, the best description of the A9 Plus is an old proverb, but in reverse. It's a master of one and not a jack of all trades. The hardware is perfectly capable of focusing on one activity at a time, whether that's for streaming, surfing, or basic productivity, like writing documents. It's worth noting you definitely won't purchase the A9 Plus for any serious productivity applications, such as illustration or video editing. However, it's surprisingly good for gaming. I play a few games on my phone, and after trying the same games on my tablet, the A9 Plus copes admirably. The only thing I noticed was the longer load times versus my S23 Ultra. Where the A9 Plus struggles is with any activity that requires swapping between apps and different functions quickly. You'll notice a somewhat significant lag and stuttering while the tablet struggles to reassign its CPU and memory resources when switching apps. I think this firmly puts the A9 Plus in the category of device suitable for users who have less expectations of their hardware. And by that, I mean users such as my aging relatives who are more likely to be focused on a single app at a time. Of course, this category of user can extend to a broader demographic too. As a rule of thumb, if you're the type of user with a mid-range phone and don't experience any frustrations, the A9 Plus is going to deliver a level of performance that you'll be satisfied with. However, if you're a user of a premium phone with the latest and greatest specifications, you'll notice the disparity in performance immediately. For me, as a more demanding user, I get frustrated at times. Sometimes I'm left wondering if I've actually tapped an app before the A9 Plus will respond. Other times when I want to quickly swap between apps, the A9 Plus will stall before finally lurching into life. What I will say is that with these factors in mind, you have to contextualize the hardware in terms of the price point. As a $300 mid-range tablet, you'll either have to compromise your expectations or seriously contemplate purchasing one of the more expensive Samsung S-series tablets instead. At the end of the day, I do see myself upgrading to a more powerful tablet. I don't need the tablet for any intensive productivity tasks such as illustration or video editing, but I would like a smoother experience. The lack of immediate responsiveness when multitasking does bug me. My S23 Ultra has spoiled me and I find myself continually wanting the tablet to be as fast or at least closer to the same performance. However, when I'm focused on a single task, such as writing or gaming, those frustrations don't arise at all. It's a credit to the way the specifications have been carefully selected by Samsung that they found a good balance of performance versus price point. As mentioned, the A9 Plus will find an audience of users who are more than happy with the compromise. Thank you for watching and as always, it would be great if you were to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.